My name is April Baer. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. And we are here today to fish for Arctic grayling. We are on the banks of the upper Chena River, just outside of Fairbanks. And this is a great location to come fish for grayling, but you can also find them in most rivers and lakes throughout Alaska. So when you're fishing for Arctic grayling, you want to make sure you have your current Alaska sport fishing license on you at all times. You also want to check the current regulation booklet to make sure you know what the regulations are for the water body you will be fishing. So let's take a look at some of the gear and tackle you might need. Grayling can readily be caught on both fly fishing gear or spinning gear. So let's talk about spinning gear first. All you need really is a light action spinning rod with four to six pound test monofilament. Grayling bite on a wide variety of tackle. I recommend using spinners, spoons, or jigs. Here's a nice example of a small spinner. This is a treble hook. Today we're on the Chena River and the Chena River is catch and release only and requires us to use a single hook. So we would have to actually cut off two of these hooks or we could just replace it with a single hook. Here's a nice example of a small spoon. This might mimic a salmon fry. And here is a cast master. All would be good choices. Today, we're gonna try using a jig. When you pick out your colors, make sure you have white and black. These colors always seem to work really well with grayling in Alaska. Also try to have some earth tones and some bright colors because they really will bite on different colors depending on the day. Let's start out today using a spinning rod with a lead head jig. You just thread the body of the jig onto the lead head. These come in different sizes. You wanna keep them small. And if you're fishing in faster water and you need a little bit of extra weight, just add a split shot or two. I'm also going to crimp the barb it just makes releasing the fish a lot easier and you won't do as much damage. So here we have a nice riffle. It flows down into a deep pool with some woody debris at the end of it. And this is exactly what we're looking for when we're choosing a fishing location. So let's see if we can catch a fish. We're gonna cast upstream a little bit let our jig float down and give it a little bit of action by jerking on the line, just a little bit. You might have had a nibble there. So grayling tend to hold in one spot in the current and wait for invertebrate drift to come down to them. They like to hang out at the bottom of these riffles in pools. So when you're fishing and you haven't had a bite in a couple of casts, it's helpful just to take a couple steps downstream, upstream, move around a little bit. You want to try to cover some area. So let's try a couple casts over here. We have a lot of nice woody debris. Grayling sometimes like to hide behind wood or down trees in the water. And then they'll dart out to get a prey item. You don't want to reel really fast. You want that jig to get down near the bottom. Oop, I think we have a fish. Nice one. So when you're landing your fish, I like to keep them in the water as much as possible. Look at this beautiful fish, nice big dorsal fin. Sometimes you can just remove the hook with your fingers. Let's see if that works. Oop, there it goes. And we want to hold them in the water. To revive your fish, you want to point them upstream, or if there's no current, you want to wave water gently into their mouth. And he was ready to go. So let's try again for another one. Arctic grayling are a really great fish to fly fish for. You just need a really lightweight fly rod. You can use a four to a six weight. 
Here are some examples of grayling flies that work well. I personally like to use the elk hair caddis, a beadhead nymph in the spring, a mosquito pattern. I like the duns, but any of these would really work great. The key to grayling fishing is to move around, so let's move downstream. In the summertime, grayling really spread out throughout an entire river, really. So you can catch them in a lot of different places, but some good places to try include rocks or other structures in the water, along seams between fast and slow current, and in deep pools. It's a nice hot day today, so I'm just wearing sandals, but remember if you're wearing waders, you can no longer use felt soles for your wading shoes. You need to have rubber soles. I'm gonna walk down to calmer water. Now, because this is catch and release, we wanna keep them in the water as much as possible. We caught this guy on a beadhead nymph. You can see the nice dorsal fin, beautiful stripes on the pelvic fins. It's handy to have a pair of pliers or hemostats on you. If you need to revive your fish, you can point them upstream so the water will pass through his mouth and through his gills. Beautiful grayling. We've caught a few fish out of this pool, so it's time for us to move downstream, try another spot. I hope you found this useful. Grab a friend and give it a try. Good luck fishing.